Most people are unsure of exactly what archaeologists do. This program will introduce you to archaeology as a systematic study of the past. Archaeology does this principally by studying the remains of the past. Many people think of archaeologists as treasure seekers and adventurers. For example, you often see archaeologists portrayed as macho, hairy-chested explorers, or as hairy-chinned, absent-minded professors. There are a few of these colorful eccentrics, but they are not typical of most archaeologists. Many archaeologists are women rather than men. Some work in museums doing research, and some are college professors. Many archaeologists also work to protect the remains of the past from being destroyed as new areas are developed. Archaeologists often work as team members with other environmental specialists so that development can take place while protecting the environment. The remains of the past are an important part of our environment. They are resources worth protecting. To protect these ancient resources, archaeologists need help from the public. What do archaeologists study? They do not study rocks unless these have been shaped into tools. Nor do archaeologists study dinosaurs. Despite what Fred Flintstone cartoons would have us believe, dinosaurs died out around 60 million years ago, long before there were human beings on Earth. But archaeologists do study some types of extinct animals that humans hunted long ago, such as woolly mammoths, camels, and bison. Some of the earliest hunting camps in North America are in Arizona, where archaeologists have found stone tools with the bones of extinct animals, evidence that these animals were killed and eaten by the first Americans. In the United States, archaeology is part of the larger field of study called anthropology, a broad study of humankind. Anthropology covers a wide range of subjects, but can be divided into four fields of study cultural anthropology, physical anthropology, anthropological linguistics, and last but not least, archaeology. The unifying theme for all of these studies is culture. If you ask most people to name something cultural, chances are they will look puzzled, scratch their heads, and perhaps suggest that museums or symphony halls or great books represent culture or cultural things. Those kinds of cultural objects are not what anthropologists mean by culture. To them, culture includes all those aspects of our lives that make us human and distinguish us from other animals. Culture is learned, passed from generation to generation. Culture includes our languages, literature and arts, traditions and customs. It is the way we dress our styles of housing and means of transportation. Culture is our beliefs, our religions, our economic and governmental systems, our sciences, and our social structure. That is how we organize ourselves into social groups, such as families, clans, tribes, and clubs. Culture is our towns, our cities, and our nations. So how does archaeology fit into the study of anthropology? Cultural anthropology is the study of societies and people that are living today. Cultural anthropologists study different societies by immersing themselves in other cultures. Such studies commonly focus on small groups in remote parts of the world. But today, cultural anthropologists even study us in modern America. Physical anthropologists study the biological adaptations of human beings, how we have evolved physically and adapted to our world. Physical anthropologists compare humans to other animals, such as chimpanzees, to determine what we have in common and how we are different. Linguists study language. They look at the similarities and differences between the thousands of languages spoken or written by humans. Language is the main way that we pass on information about our culture, about our thoughts, and our environment. Archaeology combines all three of these areas of anthropology with a focus on the past. 
archaeologists recover things and document things that have been made by people. Information used by archaeologists comes from many sources. The recent past resides in our memories, and archaeologists may occasionally interview people who once lived in a place that is now abandoned, or who may have knowledge about how their ancestors lived. Some of the past is recorded in written records, such as papyrus scrolls, clay tablets, or engraved monuments. But archaeologists rely primarily on the things that have been preserved. These include magnificent structures such as Mayan pyramids, or exquisite art such as these stone carvings on a temple in Mexico. Such things are rarely discovered, however. Few archaeologists have the chance to exclaim, I see wonderful things, as Howard Carter did when he first peered into King Tut's tomb. Most archaeologists study lost, worn out, broken, discarded, or abandoned things. You could say that archaeologists are the garbage collectors of the past. You probably think that garbage is pretty worthless, something that we struggle to hide, to bury, or to burn. So why study old, even ancient garbage? Well, believe it or not, some archaeologists have created the science of garbology, studying fresh garbage to analyze modern patterns of behavior. People don't always eat what they say they eat, and they often waste more than they think they do, but the garbage doesn't lie. Here in Arizona, broken pots are a type of prehistoric garbage that archaeologists often study. What can we learn from studying old broken pots? Pottery pieces or sherds provide evidence of the development of technology. The firing of clay into ceramic material requires technological insight. Clay and heat are necessary for all types of pottery production, but different cultures produce many different types of pottery for different uses. The choice of clay and tempering material and how the surfaces of the vessels were smoothed or polished or painted varied a lot. Very porous pots are good for storing water because some of the water will evaporate slowly through the pot, cooling the remaining water. One way to make porous pottery is to use grass in the clay. When the pot is fired, the grass burns, leaving empty spaces in the wall of the vessel. Pottery is typically found among people who live in one place for a long time and grow much of their food. Decorations and painting on the surface of pots can provide clues about interactions among cultures. Designs were sometimes copied from other potters and groups, or whole vessels were traded from one group to another. Just as fashions in clothes and cars change today, so did the decorations on pottery. Figuring out when a certain style of pottery was introduced, when it flourished, and when it began to change or disappear can help us to determine when people lived in a particular place. To sum up, a trash pile of broken pottery can be a gold mine of information for archaeologists. This information is lost, though, when the pieces are moved or taken away. Each archaeologist has a particular way of studying the past, but in general, the process involves several steps. First, archaeologists have to find evidence of places where people lived and worked in the past, which are called archaeological sites. Archaeologists walk across the ground looking for clues, such as broken pottery or pieces of chipped stone. Sometimes sophisticated high-tech methods are used. Aerial photos, satellite imagery, ground-penetrating radar, and magnetometer surveys are some of the techniques used. For instance, aerial photos can be used to discover ancient roads that may not be obvious on the ground. Site investigations begin with careful recording of what can be seen on the surface. Often, nothing more is done at most sites unless they are threatened with destruction or are recognized as having special potential for addressing particular research questions. Then test excavations might be made to find out what the site is like below the surface and to determine how deep the archaeological deposits are. Sometimes a site is completely excavated. Excavation can be slow and painstaking using small hand tools. 
but most sites are excavated with shovels and the dirt is almost always screened for artifacts. Archaeologists may even use heavy equipment such as backhoes and machine-driven screens. Archaeologists use the most efficient tools to recover the information they seek. Notes and drawings are kept during all phases of study. Photographs are also taken. Although artifacts are saved, their relationship to each other in the soil is destroyed when a site is excavated. Careful records must be kept because without them, archaeologists would not be accomplishing their goal of reconstructing what happened at a site. All of the artifacts recovered during a dig are analyzed in a lab. Usually more time goes into laboratory analysis than was spent in digging in the field. Artifact collections and records have to be safely preserved for future researchers. The items displayed in museums are only a very small part of the research collections that museums keep for future study. Archaeologists write reports for others to read because information about the past belongs to everyone. Archaeology is not a particularly exact science. The topics studied by archaeologists are complex and the data that can be gathered are limited. It is like trying to put together a puzzle with lots of the pieces missing. Although archaeologists have been at work for about 150 years, new information discovered tomorrow can overturn the facts of today. Do archaeologists think they've really learned anything about the past? Of course, but each new piece of evidence will test today's ideas and improve our understanding of the past. What are some of the primary things that anthropologists and archaeologists have learned about the past and about culture? One is that culture is tremendously diverse. Although much of the world is becoming Americanized, a lot of diversity remains. Through time, there have been thousands of cultures, and we have things to learn from each of them. Another thing they have learned is that cultures always change, sometimes slowly, sometimes rapidly. Learning how humans have changed is what archaeology is all about, by studying the people, their tools, and their houses. There are many more people on Earth today than there have been in the past. Humans not only adapt to the Earth's varied and changing environments, but they also have the power to alter environments, both willfully and in unintentional ways. We need knowledge about our past to learn from the past, to understand the context of our modern lives, and to help chart the course of our future.